The Liberal Party is clinging to its power by its tooth and nail, refusing to heed the growing calls from the public for them to step down. Recent polls have shown that more than 80% of all Canadians want Trudeau to step down in favor of different leadership. That is an alarming number that should never be taken lightly and a true reflection of how everyone is fed up. But some metrics tell another story. The Liberals were somehow able to attract more voters in recent by-elections in stark contrast to their unpopularity. So how is that the case? Stick around to find that out. Why the NDP might regret their decision to back Trudeau. Why all of this is important and more. Welcome to Street Politics Canada. Before we continue, we wanted you to know that this video will mainly revolve around the NDP and its current position within Canadian politics. The NDP has an unusual top-down hierarchy of power that allows Jagmeet Singh to reign supreme, which by definition means Trudeau is actually in control, extending to even its provincial branches. If you did not know this already, then you might enjoy this feature we previously made. Well, sorry, Singh, but you are going to fail woefully. Also, the NDP has stood still and watched as the Liberal Party took their ideas and made them their own, like the legalization of marijuana, which was first promised in the 2015 elections. All these have shown the NDP to be something of an offshoot of the Liberal Party, and this has rubbed some of the Liberals' bad image on the NDP and placed Singh in the same spot as Trudeau. Moving on, the NDP has damaged its image and its relationship with the Canadian people more. On August 24, 2021, Singh said, for each family in Canada, a universal pharmacare would save them on average $500 per month. That's whether or not they have coverage right now or if they don't have coverage. People would save at least $500 a month per family, and for many families, it'd be thousands of dollars a month. This was another false claim because the NDP's own pharmacare plan claims it would save Canadians who currently have private drug coverage an average of five. It will help you learn more about the suspicious nature of the NDP and why you should be wary of them. We have many different reasons to believe that the public wants the Liberals gone, but the last by-elections were only proof that suggests that sly Liberal politics are paying off. If anything, it was the Liberals who had the best round, winning 5% more votes in the last five by-elections compared to the 2021 general election, and it got me wondering, where did those votes come from? How the hell is the party fervently hated by almost the entire Canadian public managing to pull this off? Although it seems to defy logic, but the answer is simple. It's all at the expense of the NDP, of course. The moment the NDP decided to prop up the Liberal government was the same moment they basically let go of every last shred of integrity they might have had. They have the audacity to still label themselves an opposition party, but at this point it's laughable. Jagmeet Singh has transformed the NDP from a regular political party to a pathetic, subservient rubber stamp institution that only exists to legitimize the unpopular Liberal rule. We've previously discussed in one of our videos how the NDP's flawed power structure allows Singh to keep all members in every province on a short leash, just like Trudeau keeps him on one. A party with no identity. Because of this, their support base has grown increasingly similar to that of the Liberals, blurring the lines between both of their supporters. Logically, the bigger and more dominant Liberal Party is absorbing the NDP's votes, because this is the only remaining reserve of voters they could potentially tap into. Everyone else is staunchly against Trudeau. So why is the NDP so defenseless? Last year, the NDP and the Liberals agreed on a confidence and supply agreement. Basically, through this agreement, the NDP declared it will support the government on all confidence votes in the House, which would secure Liberal rule till 2025. In return, the government apparently promised to start making progress on key NDP priorities like dental care and pharmacare, who sells out their party for such trivial promises. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh needs to consider a different course of action other than propping Trudeau, while pretending to challenge him because no one has fallen for that anymore. If Singh truly had a mind of his own and wasn't a puppet for Trudeau, he should have broken the deal back when Johnston refused to resign and call for early general elections. His chances of winning said elections were virtually non-existent, but he had a solid chance to exercise the liberal evil out of Canadian politics. So what's his endgame now? At some point, the NDP is going to have to dissolve this deal because Singh can't walk out of the agreement one day before the general elections and claim that he is now competing against Trudeau and the Liberals after years of blindly supporting him. The NDP's reputation would be completely eroded by 2025 if they keep this going on and their voter base will be more or less entirely captured by the Liberals. They will stand no chance to win the general elections or even secure enough seats in the House of Commons to be any more relevant than second-tier parties such as the Green Party and the PPC. Singh is committing political self-destruction by his continual support for Trudeau, and with every passing day, he is allowing his party to sink further. So could we expect all of this to be a wake-up call? Could Singh possibly change course and break his deal in a last-ditch attempt to save his party? Unlikely. 
Singh himself and other leading figures within the NDP don't seem to either acknowledge the issue of bleeding support to the liberals, nor do they seem to be alarmed in any way. Somehow it's business as usual, leading us to the only possible conclusion that the NDP are sellouts who are not only sacrificing their party to please their leader, but are sacrificing Canada's future and stability for God knows what. NDP MP Alastair McGregor said that he was not worried, citing that the NDP had good numbers, and that his party's supporters are satisfied with the progress they were making. He's either delusional or just failing hard to read between the lines, or he's simply following instructions from his liberal overlords. He even had the audacity to claim his party was looking out for Canadians. He's quoted saying, We've always gotten into this agreement because it's about whether it's helping Canadians and especially those who are struggling. That's the yardstick that we use when we're measuring the supply and confidence agreement. Enabling a power-hungry maniac to keep wreaking havoc on our country is helping Canadians. Allowing millions to suffer under a fanatic leader they do not want is helping Canadians. What exactly have you been smoking, McGregor? Although on the surface it doesn't seem like the NDP will budge anytime soon, there still might be hope for our country. Every single political faction, individual, or organization must apply maximum pressure on the NDP to break their deal with the Liberals' effective immediately. Not to save them from their ultimate demise, but to save our country from complete destruction at the hands of Trudeau. The most recent polling numbers have shown that the Conservatives are currently in the lead with almost 34.7 of voters supporting them, in comparison to the Liberals' 29.4%. An early general election will most likely see Pierre Polyev secure a landslide conservative victory and Canada would be finally free from Trudeau's communist fever dreams. A Liberal Party buffed up with NDP voters is an unfair challenge for the Conservatives or any other challenger for that matter, but it would still most likely not be enough for the Liberals to continue ruling beyond 2025. The Liberal Party has been in power for almost eight years, and they should be in decline by every metric, but because of one man's lack of integrity, Canada might pay a very steep price. Regardless of how upcoming events unfold, Jagmeet Singh and his NDP party should one way or another be completely obliterated and crushed. Such a party should never play any part whatsoever in our democracy. Rubber stamp parties should only exist within the confines of an authoritarian regime, something every Canadian must fight to prevent from happening before it's too late. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Jagmeet Singh is a traitor who blindly serves Trudeau? Will the Liberal Party entirely swallow the NDP? Do you think any of this will prevent the Conservatives from winning the next general elections? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also kindly subscribe and leave a like for this video and our other videos because they go a long way in helping our latest content rank. Follow us on our new Twitter account, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.